Hey guys, what's up? It's Ranish again with another Git for the Intimidated screencast. This is the second one in the series and we'll be talking about using the command line. So today we're going to talk about using the command line and then hopefully in the next screencast we get to installing Git. So we know from the first screencast that there's a graphical user interface for Git. Here I'll move this around and you can see on gitscm.com uh, they have a GUI client for Mac that you can use. But I want to submit to you a question. Uh, do you honestly think you can go your whole Git life with just the GUI? Like, do you think you can totally avoid the command line? If you honestly think that, that's fine, you're wrong, but I, I will bear no grudge. Uh, I would invite you to stop watching this and then go watch one of those Harlem Shake videos. They're really fun. But if you're like me, you're aware that you will always have to use the command line. Like, it'll, it'll come up at some point in your Git using life. So, let's carry forward. Let's carry forward learning the command line. One thing I want you to keep in mind is that there is no Git involved in this screencast. We're strictly learning about the command line that already exists in our Macs. So if you haven't installed Git yet, no worries. And from here on out, I'd like you to pause the video as needed. Just try stuff out on your own. Don't worry, you won't break anything. So we access the command line using a program called Terminal. So what I'm going to do right now is minimize this and minimize all this. And I'm going to open up Finder. So I want you to go down and open up Finder. Okay. And just do a search in Finder for a terminal. And hit Enter. And make sure you're searching this Mac, not all my files, because Terminal is an application. And ah, look. The first thing that comes up is an application called Terminal. And uh, so you might actually find it in your Applications folder. Um, but yeah, just do a search if you don't know where to find it. So open up Terminal. I already have an instance open, so it's not going to pop up a new screen for me. It's just going to open the, it's going to change this bar at the top. But I'm just going to go to Shell, New Window. And look, my terminal pops up. And now I can issue commands to the command line. Cool, right? Let me open up the terminal screen I have formatted for screencast viewing, though. Nice. Uh, so yeah, um, this is how you open up Terminal on your Mac, and this is what you see. And this is part of what's intimidating about Git, is look, you just have this blank command line here, and you may not know what to type. That's part of the intimidation factor with using Git and the command line. But I'll demonstrate that there is really just eight commands. And these eight commands will get you pretty darn proficient with using the command line, uh, so you needn't fear to use the command line anymore. So what is the command line, actually? What's going on right here? Uh, basically, this is just a place to tell your computer to do stuff. This command, like, that line won't work. Notice it says command not found. That means it didn't know what that sentence meant. Um, and the one thing you really should realize, like, very important to realize, is that this mirrors the desktop, or the GUI, basically. So, let me clear this out. And I'm just going to prove that real quick. Uh, so I'm in this, uh, I'm in the folder called desktop right now in my command line. I'm just going to run a command called make directory cool folder. And look, if you looked on my desktop, cool folder just appeared. Let me do it again. I'm going to call it cool folder 2. And if you look right around here, it'll pop up. There you go, cool folder too. Let me just drag those to the trash. I'll keep them around. They're cool folders. So yeah, what happens here also happens out there. Keep that in mind, guys. Okay, so uh, what are these eight commands? Let's just start getting into it. What I want you to do right now is to type PWD. That's the first command. PWD is print working directory. That's what it stands for. But if you type PWD, PWD tells you where you are, what folder you are in. And so let's get to the first like a uh, like a golden rule of the command line. Uh, you are always in a folder. That's really what the command line is: moving around between files and folders and issuing commands. So type PWD to find out where you are. And look, we're in the user slash Ranish slash desktop folder. Okay. The second command I want you to type is ls. 
And ls just tells us what's around us. So I'm going to minimize this real quick. Uh, I typed in ls, and it said cool folder was here, and cool folder 2 was here. Uh, and I'm going to minimize this real quick. And look, if you look at my desktop, there's nothing there except cool folder and cool folder 2. So ls just tells us what's in the folder along with us. And now I'm going to make one more directory. And I'm going to run ls again. And cool, it says there's cool folder, cool folder 2 and cool folder 3. And if we minimize it, sure enough, that's all that's on my desktop right now, just these three cool folders. There's another flavor of the ls command called ls-a. And it tells you that there's all this other stuff in here all of a sudden, this dot file, this dot ds store, dot localized file. And basically these are like, it shows like every single little thing in this folder. Like these dot files aren't shown to you because they're how the computer runs. The computer uses them in the background to run, but you don't need to know they're there. But it's just for completion's sake, the ls-a command exists. Okay, so we went through pwd to say where we were, and then ls to see what's around us. Uh, all these cool folders. So two commands of eight down. So this screen is kind of messy, right? I have all these lines of text, and I just uh, I don't like it. I want to clear out the screen and just have a clean single line, which gets us to command three. I want you to hold the command key on your keyboard, press and hold it right now, and then hit the K button, the K letter, and that clears out your screen. So let me type PWD a few times and mess up my, like, look, it's just getting messy, right? Now I'm going to press and hold the command button on my keyboard and then hit the K letter, and boom, my screen clears. That's command number three. Command plus K. Boom. So let's move to command number four. So we're, uh, if I do an ls, you see, hey, there's all these cool folders. Let me enter one of those cool folders. So I'm going to use the command cd. And cd means change directory. And actually, there's two flavors of it. So I'm going to go cd, and then I'm going to type in the name of the folder I want to go into, cool folder. And notice now, look, I went from the desktop to being inside the cool folder right now. And if I want to go back up a level, I just do cd dot dot, cd space dot dot. So that's the command to move up and down between folders. cd, and then the name of the folder, uh, place you want to go, go. Or you do cd dot dot to go back up a level. And that's the cd command. So let me cd, uh, so what's, uh, where am I now? Like I just did cd dot dot and I was at the desktop and now I'm somewhere else, like it doesn't seem to say. So what would I run? pwd. And cool, I'm in the user slash Ranish folder. And what's around me right now? Else, whoa, there's like all these folders, right? Like I got some files here. Like, and I got like my movies folder, and like, you know, I can CD into any of these. Like, look, there was the desktop, that's where I was. So let me CD back into desktop. And cool, now I'm back in desktop. And let me run a PWD, and hey, there I go. So we had PWD, LS, and then now we have CD. And CD dot dot takes you up a level, and then CD file name takes you down a level. And with cd dot dot and then cd file name, like, that's it. You can now move around your whole computer through the command line and then do stuff. Uh, moving around is really easy. So let's actually make a folder now. So let me go back into the desktop, and you saw this command already, mcdir, right? And I'm going to make a new directory called cool underscore folder 4. And look, it pops up there right now. So mcdir means make directory. That's what it stands for. Just like cd was change directory. So let's cd into one of these files. Let's cd into cool underscore folder. And yep, I did a pwd and sure enough I'm in users niche desktop cool folder. Now I want to make a file. So the command to do that is a very sensual and strange command called touch. Touch. And it creates a blank file. So I can give some name, touch, and then uh, I'm going to call it cool file. And it worked. So if I do an ls, let me command k to clear this screen out. If I do an ls, look, there's some cool file here that exists. 
And let me run touch again and then make cool underscore file dot txt. And if I do an ls, sure enough, now I have two files in this folder. Uh, so yeah, that's cool. And I can make pretty much any extension. Um, if you use touch to make some stuff like uh, cool underscore file dot pages, it'll work, but then like opening it could be buggy. So really you want, what we want to do is use it for stuff like that txt or html or markdown. Uh, kind of more basic file types, HTML, yeah, stuff like that. Let me make the HTML file. Uh, so touch creates a file, and I created a file, but hey, now I want to like open it and put content in, right? So I think you can guess what this command is. It's called open. So let me do an ls to see what I have. I have these four files I could open, and let me open them. Open, underscore file. This will just open this first file because I'm not putting the extension in. And look, it opens up for it and texted it for me by default. Uh, I can open cool underscore file.html and it's going to open up in my browser because on my computer, HTML folders open up by default in my browser. But there's nothing there because it's a blank HTML file. Uh, I can open up uh, cool underscore file.pages and this will not work. Uh, so document cool underscore file dot pages cannot be read because it's actually, so touch isn't like, it won't create everything. Like really complex file types like uh, dot pages or dot numbers or something like that, like it, it might, it will be a little buggy. But for basic file types, open works like a charm. Uh, if you have more complicated file types, you'll have to use like a different program to open it. Like so my text editor is called Sublime on my computer. It's a text editor you can download. And then there I can open up cool underscore file dot html. And now it'll open up not in my browser, but in a text editor, so I can write some HTML. So that's how you open files. Um, and then finally, let's just go over one more command. I, I call it the kill switch. So uh, that's, again, just like the command K to clear your screen out. Hit press and hold the control button in your keyboard, and then now hit the C button. And what you'll see right here is not much. It just goes to a new line. But basically what it says is, kill whatever is going on this line. And now if I hit Command-C, it just stopped it completely and brought me up a fresh new line. So if you're ever working in the command line and things go haywire or you run a piece of code that like just keeps running endlessly or something like that, hit Control-C. Uh, one thing that you'll do often is when your Rails server is running, you'll hit Control-C to stop it and just kill it. And yeah, that's it. Those are like the eight commands you need to know to be really proficient moving around the command line. Those are like the bulk of what you'll be using. Now we'll, let me clear the screen out, press an old command and hit the K button. When it finally comes time to do stuff with git, uh, our commands will actually be very similar. We'll type git and then some command basically. Um, if you remember in the first one I typed git init. And look, that worked. It's no size empty git repository which we'll talk about later. But yeah, so you do a uh, git and then some command. And is that so strange? It's really not. So when you say git uh, init, right? What you're really saying is, hey, let's do this, git init. What it really means is saying, hey computer, use the git program to run the init command. That's all it's saying. And when we did touch, right? Touch some file.txt, what we're really saying is, Hey computer, use the touch command to uh, create a file called summonsurefile.txt. That's all that's going on right there. Um, so yeah, using git is just kind of a natural extension of using the command line. So if that seemed like a quick crash course, it is, but it's a really powerful crash course. That's literally like most of what you need to know. But I want to introduce you to a, a really great resource. UnixMages.com. Go there. There's a free ebook you can download, uh, and it's like this awesome book. It takes just about only about three hours to go through, and it's told like in an amazingly like great story way, like where you pretend you're a wizard using the command line to cast spells. But that's how you like go from just knowing the basics of the command line to being a total command line boss. It's amazing. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, so please go to UnixMages.com. Download the free ebook and spend just about three hours, that's how long it took me to get through like this 80 page book and you'll just be a wizard with the command line. Um, 
So that's it. I want to keep this short. Uh, so that's all I'll be going over today. With those eight commands, and then you can always reference this book later for like deeper commands, uh, you'll be well on your way to using the command line for Git. Um, so that's it. Uh, let me give you my contact info. I'm Ranish, and if you got any questions or comments, hit me up at ranish at gmail.com or at www.ranish.com. That's R-O-N-E-E-S-H, and that's it. So I'll see you guys next time where we'll be talking about uh, installing Git, and then after that, we'll begin some basic working with Git.